Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research, and we have been working on some amazing Tinkercad circuits tutorials, and now we're gonna build them in real life. So this is our breadboarding circuits tutorial series. So the first one that we're gonna do is we're gonna learn about this breadboard, and we are going to wire up an LED with this breadboard, and we're gonna do that using just a plain old battery. This is a CR2032, and then I have some jumper cables that are gonna to go to my battery, and I have some smaller cables that I'm going to use to connect into this breadboard. Now, this breadboard is a really quick and easy way to solder things. So here, the vertical parts, these columns are all connected. So if I plug in a wire, let's say here, if I plug in a different wire in that same column, so these are both in the same column, they're kind of like me soldering them together. If I put them in different boxes, in the same row, those are not connected. All right, so our columns going up and down are all connected, and our rows going across are not. Now it's really important, you'll notice there's this big groove right here, and this is a kind of a jumper. It's a gap that we put in there because there's a lot of integrated chips, things that you will do, act like little computers for you, and you don't want all of their pins connected, and so you put them across this. So this column here is connected, but this one is not connected to this column, even though they're both in column 22. The top column and the bottom column are separate. Now, opposite to that is the top rails. Now these are called our power rails. These ones are connected across this way in the whole row, and they are not connected up and down. And you can kind of gather that by here we have the plus, and it gives us this red line and this is where we would probably want to plug in everything that's hot because the plus will remind us. The minus and the blue line, sometimes you can find these as black in your breadboards, and that's where you would want to plug your ground in. And you'll notice you have these power options on the top and also on the bottom. So if you wanted, you could plug a battery in to this um, red part, and if you wanted, you could put a jumper all the way down to the bottom, and that would power both of these positive rails right here. All right, so breadboards are really helpful because you don't have to solder it. You can just plug them into columns that are connected or if you wanna go into you know, your voltage, you can plug them all up here and you can do that pretty quickly and efficiently without having to solder, but it works better than trying to hold it together with tape. So today we are going to light up this LED and that is Kind of fun because LEDs are like these one-way streets and they have a long leg and a short leg, so that's gonna be really important. And before we get started, we want to make sure our LED works. So you can take your battery. If it's a coin cell battery, the bottom is sort of this bubbly part and the top has that writing on it. And you're going to put the writing with the longer leg and just make sure your LED lights up. Because if it doesn't, either your LED is not working, it could be blown out, or your battery could be dead. So you need to make sure that works before we start doing this, all right? All right, so let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to add in the red wire for our battery. So this is going to go to the top of our battery, and we can just do that really easily by plugging it in up into this positive rail up here. All right, and if we're gonna put the red into the battery, we should also do the black or the ground, which could go into the blue or black rail depending on what kind of breadboard you have. And you'll notice these really push into the breadboard. So it will give you a little resistance and you're going to want to push it all the way in. That makes it have a really good connection. All right. So next we are going to add in our LED and we want to make sure we know which side is the long leg and the short leg because those LEDs are one way streets. So if we hook the battery up backwards, our LED won't line up. So I'm gonna make sure that my long leg is to the right, and then I can plug this in. They can go right next to each other, because remember, the pieces in the row are not connected to each other. All right, so I've got this guy, and it's just plugged in, one going into each um, little square in the same row, so they're in different columns, and that will help us as we wire it up. All right, so now let's wire up the red part, so the long leg, which for me is in row or column number nine, that is what gets connected 
to my positive voltage. So I'm gonna take a jumper, I'm gonna go from the positive voltage and into nine, just like this. All right, now you might have longer jumper cables, all your jumper cables might look like this. And if you do, that's totally fine. You would just take it from the positive and you could put it in like this. So you might, you might just have more wire and that's totally fine. Both of these wires are doing the exact same thing. The color of your wire doesn't matter. It just is really important to think about the colors of wires that you use because it can help keep you really organized. So I'm gonna take this one off just so we can see things better, but you might have these longer jumpers and that's totally fine. It can get a little clunky if you have a lot of wiring to do, but it also works really nicely. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to add in our black wire. And that is the one that goes to ground. So I'm gonna have this little um, jumper cable here and it needs to go up to the negative rail and then into column eight, just like that. And you can press your items in. And this is now all connected. So I would basically, my circuit would go through the red and it would come out through this orange go through my LED, and then it would come into ground, which would go into the bottom of the battery. Now to turn this on, all I need to do is I need to put the bottom of the battery against this piece right here, the black wire that's the bottom, and then the top of the battery will go in onto the top, or sorry, the top of the battery will come to the red wire. All right, and so I can just pinch that, and that can be a fun, easy way to do this, with a coin cell battery, if you don't have a battery holder, you can just sandwich that coin cell battery and hold it. If you want it always on, you could tape around here and you could tape that piece in, but it also acts as an easy switch or maybe you tape one side in and then your switch is just putting this part on and off. All right, now sometimes when we work with uh, LEDs, we don't actually want to put a lot through a lot of this current or a lot of voltage through that LED. It can be really bad for it. It's not a super huge problem here because we're using a little tiny battery. This is just a three volt battery. But one thing you could do to protect your LED is to add in a resistor. And if you get a kit, you'll have a bunch of resistors. They come sort of like this and they'll come in this big package. And if you open your package, not all these resistors are created equal. All right, so they kind of put them on this paper, which is really nice. They can all stick together. And this one has a number printed on it. It says 10, and that is means it has 10 ohms. So that's not very much resistance. This one says 100K on it. So that's 100,000 ohms. So this is a much bigger resistance. It's much harder for our current to go through here. And in some situations, this might even make it so the LED can't light up. And this is maybe not much resistance at all. Um, I'm not really sure when you would use such a small resistor, but you can go through this and you can look sort of at all the different things. Now this came in our Elegoo set and it came with a whole bunch of different sizes. I love the Elegoo sets because they come with a lot of what you need. Sometimes I wish they gave you a little bit more in there, but this is how the resistors look. And what you can do is you can cut your resistors smaller. So you'll notice that these legs are really short and I sort of turned my resistor into a little staple. So you can sort of see that staple shape, that staple shape right there. And that helps you plug it into your breadboard. So if I wanted to protect this LED, what I could do is I could take out this wire that I have going into ground and instead of connecting to ground through a wire, which is essentially zero ohms, I could connect it to ground through this resistor. And I can put this resistor in right here. Gotta push it down, just gotta get it just right. And now this will protect it. It will make sure I don't have too much voltage going across. And then I could, of course, double check that it still works by plugging the top and the bottom of the battery in. Now you'll notice it's dimmer or maybe that's hard to see on our screen, but it is a little bit dimmer and that's because this is making the current go more slowly through this LED. So it's not getting as much of a voltage drop across the LED and the larger the voltage drop, the brighter your LED will be. This is one way you can control the brightness of your LED is 
by controlling how big that resistor is. However, if you don't control, if you are like, I'm gonna use a really big battery and no resistor to get a super bright LED, you can blow out your LED, right? So it can burn it out and sometimes they can even explode. So you do wanna be careful with that. And that's why it's really good practice to go through at least one resistor into ground with your LEDs. Thank you so much for joining us on this super simple LED breadboarding tutorial. We have a lot of fun ones coming up for you guys. So make sure that you follow along and learn with us. Have a great one. Bye friends. <laughs>